Hello and welcome. The add boundary layers task of the watertight geometry workflow allows you to create high resolution mesh near selected surfaces which can be used to capture flow property gradients especially near wall surfaces when performing a CFD simulation. Among the user inputs required in this task are the region and the surface on which the boundary layer mesh needs to be generated. This is the focus of this lesson. Excited? Let's get started. When simulating a fluid flow problem using CFD, high resolution mesh is required at the fluid solid interface to capture the complex fluid flow behavior in the boundary layer region. For this, the watertight geometry workflow has the add boundary layers task using which the required boundary mesh can be defined. The user inputs required to define the boundary layer mesh need to provide information regarding two key aspects. The first is how to define the boundary layer mesh, which includes the type of boundary layer and how it must grow on the selected surfaces. And the second is where to apply the boundary layers, which is the focus of this lesson. To define the locations of boundary layer mesh generation, two user inputs are required, that is, add in and grow on. The add in option specifies the region or a volumetric zone of the CFD model in which you would like to add the boundary layers. Once the region has been selected, the grow on option is used to specify the surfaces on which the boundary layers need to be added within the selected region. Through the various options available for these two inputs, the watertight workflow provides great flexibility for the user to specify where boundary layer mesh is added in the computational model. Let us now understand some specific aspects of these inputs through an example. Launch ANSYS Fluent in meshing mode. Go to File, Read, Select Mesh and then pick the provided mesh file. Once Fluent finishes reading the file, you will notice that the watertight geometry workflow has been automatically set up and all the tasks till the update regions task have already been successfully completed. This is because the surface mesh that we just imported into Fluent has originally been created using the watertight workflow and saved after completing the update regions task. Such files when read back into Fluent retain the information regarding their workflow. The model we have here is that of a generic ball or check valve which consists of one solid region that is the pipe geometry and three fluid regions that is the inlet pipe region, the valve region and the outlet pipe region. The ball valve is considered as a void in the model. In this example, we will use the default settings for all the inputs in the task except the number of layers which we will set to 5 and analyze only the influence of different add-in and grow-on options. Let us begin with adding boundary layers in all the fluid regions by selecting the option fluid regions in the add-in field. The only walls option which is the default for grow-on input will add layers on all the wall type boundaries in the fluid region. Click Add Boundaries to confirm the inputs. Next, go to Generate the Volume Mesh task and without changing the default options, click on Generate the Volume Mesh button. Once the volume mesh has been generated, we can turn on the clipping plane and visualize an X cut of the model. Notice that the layers grow from the pipe wall and the ball valve surface into the fluid region. When all zones is chosen, boundary layers will grow on all the boundary surfaces 
that enclose each fluid region. As you can see here, along with layers on the walls, prism elements are generated on the inlet and outlet surfaces as well as the fluid-fluid interfaces. If it is required to grow layers only in the interface of the solid and fluid regions, then choose solid-fluid interface option. This will create high-resolution mesh only at the solid fluid interfaces of the fluid regions and all other types of boundaries in the fluid regions such as the surfaces of the void regions will be ignored when this option is selected. This is easily noticed here where the ball valve void surface has no boundary layer mesh attached to it. The task also provides the freedom to choose specific surfaces associated with the selected regions for adding the boundary layers through the selected zones and selected labels options. Pick either of these options depending on whether you want to select the surfaces by zones or by labels. For demonstration, here we generated the boundary layer mesh on the pipe wall surface only in the inlet fluid region using the selected zones option. There are a couple of other options in Add-in which provide additional flexibility in creating the boundary layer mesh. The Named Regions option allows you to custom select the regions in which the boundary layers need to be added. When Add-in is set to Named Regions and Grow On option is set to Selected Zones or Selected Labels, only the surfaces associated with the selected regions are listed. For example, let us select the pipe's inlet and the outlet fluid regions and grow layers on the pipe wall surface only in these regions. Notice that the boundary layers collapse at the end of the inlet fluid region and are entirely absent in the valve region and then once again get created in the outlet fluid region. This is because the pipe wall surface associated with the valve region was not selected for growing the boundary layer mesh. The add-in input also provides the option to add layers in the solid regions if required by the user. This is helpful in cases like conjugate heat transfer analysis where it is recommended to add a few boundary layer cells in the solid region along with the fluid region at the solid fluid interface. This is to avoid large cell jumps at the solid fluid interface for better prediction of temperature distribution and gradients across the interface. It is also possible to create boundary layer mesh on baffles or zero thickness surfaces which are generally used to mimic two-sided walls or interiors. If the baffle is defined as a wall, the boundary layer mesh will be created on both sides of the baffle if grow on is set to any option that includes wall surfaces. If the baffle is an internal region, boundary layer mesh can be created by setting grow on option to selected labels and picking the baffle surface. Additionally, there are two advanced options. First is the ignore boundary layers at acute angles, which when set to yes will automatically skip boundary layer generation where there are acute angles. Second is the modify surface mesh at invalid normals, which will automatically change the surface mesh where invalid normal faces are detected so that the boundary layer mesh grows in proper direction, that is, away from the boundary. For further details, please refer to the user guide. From all the above discussion, it is clear that a combination of add-in and grow-on options can be used to pick and choose where the boundary layer mesh is created. In fact, here is an example where different offset methods with different mesh size controls are employed in different regions of our demo problem. To briefly put, 
there is an enormous amount of flexibility that is provided for the user to define the boundary layer mesh. To summarize, we learned that the add in and grow on options of the add boundary layers task can be used to define where to go the boundary layers in the computational model. The add in option can be used to select regions and the grow on option is used to select surfaces within those regions. We discussed the different options in grow on and their effect on boundary layer mesh generation. Finally, we noted that not only can boundary layers be added in fluid regions as a whole, but also in selected regions and even in solid regions as well using the add-in option. With this, let's wrap up this lesson.